gone, gone, gone. Ugh, get off me, get off me, your breath's terrible. It's worse than Tom Marvin's. This is Poppy. I've been riding with her for around a year now. She's about two and a half years old. She's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier mixed with the Jug, which is obviously a Jack Russell and a Pug. She's got a powerful front figure. She's got a good little face on her, but she's got a bit of a chunky rump, uh, which is neatly set off by a curly tail. As on Bike Radar, we always review products against the best there is on the market. I'm going to have to review Poppy against the best dogs that there are in existence. Um, Ruby the Trail Dog, she's a beautiful, lithe, long-legged Vizsla and she's just a cross-country champ and she can effortlessly cover ground at great speed. Poppy, unfortunately not so much, she's only got little legs. She's a little bit tubby around the rear end, she simply doesn't have the suspension travel to compete with her anyway, uh, never mind the distance covering capabilities. Sorry about that. However, I should say that I think that Ruby the Trail Dog really does set an impossible standard for other dogs. I think she's a bit of a body shamer. We might as well get stuck into the pluses and minuses of Poppy the Trail Dog. Well, first up, she's a tough little unit and she'll keep going for a surprisingly long time. Endurance, she'll knock out up to about 20 kilometers. Now she's a bit older and fitter. That's a, that's a pretty good amount for a dog with such dinky legs. As a breed, they're very sort of tough, they'll just keep going, so you need to be a bit careful they don't overtire themselves, but on that count, very good. I guess then we might as well move on to suspension travel. Well, of course, it's pretty limited. There's not much leg there, which means that some obstacles can be a bit big, but most jumps, most drop-offs, she can take them, and she can on-site most trails without a problem. Where she really excels is on steep, loamy single track. That means that the, uh, the lack of pace and the lack of travel isn't too much of an issue, and she can bring her natural agility to the fore. Okay, the drawbacks. Um, there's a complete lack of patience for faffing on a ride. She is not happy uh, on a group ride unless someone's riding. That involves lots of whining and squeaking, which is fair enough. It's what we all feel inside, but we just don't do it out of politeness. She doesn't suffer from that. She just lets it all come out. There's no hiding of emotions, is there? No. The main drawback is, of course, the shitting. Um, as with any dog, it's pretty endless. I don't understand how much comes out the back end of them. And obviously, as a responsible dog owner, you need to pick up every last bit of it in a little plastic bag and carry it around with you, which means that your camelback, uh, even if you double bag, will often be quite a whiffy place. I guess we might as well sum up by talking about value for money. Uh, she's a pretty durable item. Uh, vet's built, nice and low, that's a positive. Um, food, she's only little, she does eat a fair amount, high quality food obviously. She has got expensive taste in clothing, uh, she likes the odd gadget, you know, fit bark there, rough wear harness, you know, a bit of bling on your trail dog, it's not a bad thing. All in all, I wouldn't change Poppy for the world, uh, she's a fabulous trail dog, despite being very unlikely, um, she's great company to be with, and I'd say she's a top point scorer, uh, you simply can't beat her. This one will definitely be coming home with me and may or may not sleep on the bed. However, I do have one small request to all you lovely YouTube commenters out there. Would you mind toning down the comments about a rear half? She's a bit, a bit sensitive.